What's up, guys? Welcome back to True Brew Kids. And today we're going to be doing a Bible lesson, all right? Yeah, what's the lesson going to be about, man? All right, man, our lesson is going to be about patience and temperance. We're about, we're about to get right into it. But before we do, we need y'all to like, subscribe, and hit the bell, like, right now. So we need you to share it to all your friends, families, and whoever else you want to share it to. But first, we need to hit the intro. <laughs> Alright guys, shalom. Alright, so without further ado, we're going to begin our lesson with Proverbs 15 and 1. Can you get that for me? Oh yeah, I got you, man. Alright, cool. right, ready? It says this. This is Proverbs 15 and 1. It says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Okay, so that verse right there is saying that to be patient and to have temperance with somebody, you need to be talking to them. Um, <clears throat> you need to be talking to them kindly. Giving them a soft answer, giving them soft words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um... Yeah, like responding to them. In a um, soft way. Yeah, yeah, like just, exactly. yeah. Because like, if you're talking all aggressive, the first thing somebody's going to think in is they're going to tune everything else you're saying and they're going to be like, hold up, why is he talking to me like this? He must be mad about something. Then they're going to ignore everything else you say. And they're only going to hear the part where you're mad, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So that's why it says, soft answer turneth away wrath. Stop them from being mad. But grievous words start anger. Okay? All right. And um, my next verse that I got is Proverbs 12 and 18. I'll read, I can read this one. It says, Proverbs 12 and 18. It says, <clears throat> There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. So the tongue of the wise, it says when the tongue of the wise is health, it's saying that the tongue of the wise tells you what you need to do, but when it tells you what, it, what you need to do, it also helps you. Instead of just yelling at you, telling you only what you're doing wrong, it helps you. So exactly. So basically, you're comparing <clears throat> that other verse, saying that, so you need to speak kindly, but then when you speak kindly, you so when you're speaking the truth, you, also, you need to give somebody the truth, but you need to give it to them in a kind way. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I think I have a precept for that, but keep expounding on that. Okay. So, um, basically, like, let's say you were talking to somebody, and, like, you're talking to them, and you're helping them. They would, ra they would listen to that instead of you just said, hey, man, you stepped on my foot. I don't like it when you do that. And you don't tell them, like, watch out where you're going. I, um, yeah, it's fine. You don't do any of that. You just yell at them. You're not supposed to, you're supposed to help people when you're talking to them instead of only telling them what they're doing wrong. Okay. I have a precept for that. I have Ecclesiasticus, or Syrac, um, chapter 20 and verse 1. It says, there is a reproof that is not comely, right? So we just read that in 2018, there is that speak if like the piercing cuff of a sword, right? You said 20 and 18? I mean, 12 and 18? Yeah, 12 and 18. Yeah, but it says, there's a speak if like the piercing cuff of a sword. So there's a <clears throat> reproof that's not comely. So when you're correcting somebody or when you're giving them the truth, you have to speak it in a nice and uh, soft way. So they don't take you the wrong way and they're not going to listen, right? Yeah. It says, um, it says um, there's a reproof that is not comely. Again, some man holdeth his tongue and is wise, okay? And verse 2, it says, It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. And he that confesseth his fault shall be preserved from hurt. Okay? Look so you're just that. supposed to speak kindly so they receive it the right way. Yeah. Hey, let's jump down to verse 13. Look at that verse. It says, A wise man by his words maketh himself beloved. We should stop there. But it's saying that a wise man, when he talks to you, like, you love getting correction from him because he uses that tactic so much. That you love getting correction because the Bible actually says that you're supposed to love getting correction from people. Exactly, yeah. because they're just helping you out. Because yeah. a wicked man would just be like, oh, he's messing up. Uh, just like Satan, he's the accuser of a brother. And he's not going to tell you, hey, you're doing something wrong. You need to work on You need to work on this, this, and this. He's not going to tell you that. He's just right when you mess up. Well, I'm going to just hold this as a secret and let the most I get him. That is just completely off. That's super wicked. Yeah. You're supposed to help your brother out. Even if they're doing something wrong to you, you're supposed to give your brother 70 times 7. Right? What you got next tonight, bro? All right, my next verse is Matthew Matthew twelve thirty six um, and thirty seven. Matthew twelve thirty six. Uh yes. Matthew okay, 12. cool. I got it. Ready? Mm -hmm. It says, "But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be thou shalt be condemned." That goes with the last verse, actually, because it's saying that how you speak to people or what you say, you're going to be condemned by. Yeah. So they, all, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you can go. Okay. So, yeah, basically, it's just saying that, like, you should, like what we were saying is you're supposed to, to speak to people that way, but the Most High is mad at you when you don't speak to people in a kind way. 
Exactly. Because the Most High doesn't always just come up and just automatically get angry at you. He gives you second chances too. Like, if the Most High did not give us second chances, nobody would be here right now. We wouldn't be here. Nobody else would be here. So, yeah. Exactly, though. You're supposed to give you're supposed to give people second chances and you're supposed to when you're correcting somebody speak kindly to them so they receive it the right way yeah and it says that you'll be judged for every word that you say and it also says that if you don't correct your person or correct your brother when you see them committing crime or committing or committing or doing something wrong that the blood will be on your hands so you're supposed to say it in a nice way and say it when they receive it so the blood will be on your hands so you're saving him and you're saving your brother and yourself exactly yeah because the Most High says that whoever kills somebody will be killed. Next verse is 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Cool, I'll get that. I'm there. Ready? Yep. It says, Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up. Okay. So, in this thing, it's taught charity basically means love. So, it says... Suffer, suffereth long means like endures before it gets mad. Exactly. And it says, and it's kind. Like, it's so love basically lasts long. Yeah, love. So you don't get ang you don't get angered quickly, just like the Most High. Yeah. So it's demonstrating right here that the Most High is love. Okay. Yeah, and anger can be with um, um, lying, um, pride, envying people, and yeah, and stuff like that. So yeah, basically, it's basically just saying. You, be, you need to be talking to people, but you also need to have love for them when you speak to them. Exactly. So you need to do everything in a... Not lovely, as in... You need to do everything with the intentions of love. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that verse actually goes with Romans 8 and... Let's get that real quick. Okay. Romans 13 and 8. Okay. Let's hit that real quick. Uh, are you there? How long is that? Okay, you cool. said 13 and 8? Yeah. Ready? Okay. Yeah. It says, Owe no man anything, so owe no man nothing, but to love one another. For he that love one another has fulfilled the law. So we know that the love of the Most High is keeping his commandments. And in his commandments, you're supposed to love your brother, right? And we also know from that other verse that loving your brother is, is um, um, having patience with him. Exactly. It says, for this, so when you're loving your brother, why, if, when you're loving your brother, why do you need to commit adultery with his wife? Why do you need to kill him or anybody in his family? Why do you need to steal from him? Why do you need to lie on him or bear false witness? Why do you need to covet, envy what he has? Or any up, if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy brother as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So when you love your brother, you're fulfilling the law, right? Yeah. So basically, patience and... um. Patience and temperance, right? Yeah. That goes with all the commandments. Just like it says. It says, love work if no ill. And when you're loving him, you can't break any commandment. Because why would I need to steal from him? That's my brother. That's my God. Why do I need to do anything against him? Yeah. Exactly. Because that's loving the most high. That's having the spirit of the most high. And when it says your brother, it doesn't mean your blood brother. It means like your brother as in your friend or anybody that you know that live near you or anything like that. You shouldn't be stealing from anybody. But still, it's just saying, you should not do that to anybody because you wouldn't like if anybody did that to you. And it also goes with your sister. Just because it says brother, it also implies that it goes with your sister, too. Yeah. First is um, Ecclesiastes In 7, 8, and 9. Yeah. Yeah, 9 and 8. Ecclesiastes 7, 8, and 9. Yeah. It says, are you, you want to read it or you want me to read it? You can read it. Okay, cool. It says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For, ang for anger resisteth the bosom of the fools. So resteth in the bosom of the fools. Yes. So basically that verse is saying right there that the Most High is um, has more grace and he loves the patient more. And also it's saying that fools are not patient. So... You should not, you should definitely be patient if you don't want to be kind of the fool because the most high says he's going to destroy the fools. Am I fact right on that a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. So it's saying the but the end of a thing that it says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So it's saying that you want your spirit to be patient rather than proud. Yeah. Because when you're patient, you're relaxed, you're waiting for everything to happen, but when you're when you're proud, you're like you just Haughty, and you're just not in the spirit of the Most High, because like you see, uh, Sirach chapter um, 
Yeah, 10 and 13. It says, For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. So the Most High hates pride, right? So he's saying, Better is patient than proud in spirit. And be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. So don't be ready to be angry. Be slow to anger like the Most High. Because if you're slow to anger, he'll be slow to anger. But if you're ready to get mad at somebody, and then you're going to be like, oh yeah, the Most High is slow with me, but I, I'm not going to be slow with you. Yeah. Then the Most High is going to be like, he's going to get he's gonna get more angry with you because he's already angry with you with some things. But then, but he's just keeping his cool. He's just staying low right now. Just, um forgiving you but then when he sees that he has more things to be angry about and you're rushing his anger the bible says the anger of the most high is like kindling a fire exactly yeah and like it happens quick like yeah and that's how you should not be because none of us should be at the level of the most high like he can get mad whenever he wants that's why when he doesn't get mad at us that's why we like that's why it's a good thing but we do not have the power to get mad at people that quick all right proverbs 14 and 29 is my next verse i'll read this one Cool. It says, he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exacted folly. So, you said 14 and 21? 29. Okay. You want me to read it? Yeah, please. It says, he that is slow to anger is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit ex exalted folly. Mm, that goes just with the last verse we just read. Right, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of a precept. It's basically saying the same thing, but we're just kind of like trying to... Um, Target to that same topic that you're supposed to be being patient with people. So this is basically saying that you have great understanding when you're slow to anger. Yeah. That means that you know a lot. That means that you have lots of wisdom that the most I gave you. And also there's a saying that people say like, when you're quiet, you can hear more. Exactly. And like that's actually, that's like scientifically proven. Like if you're blind, like your hearing abilities are stronger. But like spiritually, if you're not always trying to tell somebody something, you can listen to them and you can learn way more than you were before when you were talking all that time. And this precept, and that actually goes right here with the precept that I know that um, I have remembered, but that goes with us, um, us and our youth. It says, this is Ecclesiasticus, and it's uh, 8, 2 and 8, chapter 32, verse 8. It says, let that, I'll um, read verse 7 too. It says, speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and, when, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Then verse 8, let thy speech be short comprehending much in few words be as the one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue so you can be smart and you can be wise but keep quiet because it makes you look even smarter and when you say a lot of stuff and you babble your words then you can mess up and say stuff or you can say something or let's say you don't know nothing but you're being quiet nobody will ever know that and then while they're speaking you can learn from them and correct yourself in your mind without anybody knowing and you don't mess it up yourself yeah exactly okay our next verse is Ephesians 4 and 29. Can we read this one? Go ahead, yeah. All right, cool. It says, this is Ephesians 4 and 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Right there? Okay, give me one sec. So, corrupt communication. So, I just want to go ahead. Um, the definition of patient is able to tolerate or accept delays, problems, or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. And then the definition of temperance is the quality of moderation or self-restraint. And a lot of, I'm sure, some people don't know what moderation means. So the definition of moderation is make or become less extreme, intense, rigorous, or violent. So corrupt communication can also be violent communication. Like some people, if they get mad, some people curse or some people hurt other people while they're talking to them. And that's not a good thing to do. It's against the Bible, actually. But that which is good to the use of edifying. So I'm saying, the only thing that you're saying, the only words that you need to be using, or what you need to be saying, needs to be used for edification. So you don't just need to be saying stuff for no reason that nobody can take nothing from. Because what's the point of you speaking? Yeah. Because our whole lives as Israelites is to be learning stuff from what we're saying. Because you can't be an Israelite if you're not acting like it all the time. Yeah. Exactly. Because like you see in Colossians 3 and 23, or you can say 327, or 317, it says that everything that you do is supposed to go to the Most High. Let's get that real quick. I'll read 317 and 320. And whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Yahweh, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. All right. Right? And then it says, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. 
right? So whatever you do, you're doing it for the most high. Yeah. And you're not just going to be coming to the most high. A man of war. Yeah. A, a man of war. The king. You don't even come to the earthly king like that because you'll get put to death real quick. You can't come to regular people like that. Exactly. Okay. My next one is Colossians 4 and 6. Read that real quick? Yes. This is like a, this was one of my main ones that I wanted to add. Okay, go ahead. It says, let your speech be all the way with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how, how, hold up, Salaki. It says, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. That's a nice one. Yeah, thanks. So, um, it says, know how to answer every man, like he was saying in the verse in, Cyrac was it, I think? Yeah, yeah, it was Cyrac, yeah, 20, um, 32 and 8, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one that was saying that you don't always need to talk because when you're, when you're, um, when you're not always talking, you can always, um, you're learning to answer other people. Exactly. Yeah. But, are you better explain on that? Because, can I explain on that? Go ahead, yeah. Okay, cool. So, what I like about this is that it says that you're supposed to be, so it says that your words need to be seasoned with salt, right? Yeah. Something else that needs to be seasoned with salt is what? Sacrifices, right? Yeah. We're supposed to be a living sacrifice. That means that your words need to be a living sacrifice, right? Yeah. And your words are a part of you, just like when the Most High, when He spoke His words, it was a part of Him, like yeah. Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai is a part of Him, and He is That's the cool. Word. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. But also, it says it needs to be seasoned with salt, that ye may know how to answer every man. That goes just with Sirach thirty-two and eight, like He just said. But yeah, that's crazy. I it's love that verse. And sacrifices are like sacred, like they're like exactly. They, and that's something you give to the Most High. Yeah. Ooh, like you just said, that's crazy. give all your things to the Most High. That's dope. That's yeah, dope. That's, that's dope. super dope. All right, Sirach twenty five and six says, "There, there is one that keepeth silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling becometh hateful." Okay, hold up. So it says, "There is one that keepeth silence and is found wise." Right. So like I was saying in Sirach 32 and 8, that when you keep quiet, you're found wise, because it's like, oh, he must know something, or he must be keeping quiet to understand what we're saying, which is wise, just like that. But, um, you're, <laughs> but yeah, you're supposed to be quiet, because you, it just, it comes off smarter, and it comes off humble, which is something that the most I love, which is the opposite of pride, which is something else that proves that you're also wise, right? It says, and by much babbling becometh hateful. So when you're speaking a lot, you become hateful. People are like, yo, he's always talking. And he's like eight years old. He, he's acting like he knows all this stuff. Not bashing him, but he's saying that we're more fruitful in the spirit. And we're trying to teach you and you're just not listening, right? Yeah. Keep going. Some man holdeth his tongue because he hath not to answer. And some keep of silence, knowing his time. So look. When you hold your tongue, you may not have nothing to say. You may be learning, or you may have something, or you may have a question, but you're being quiet and letting them answer the question without you even asking it, which lets them know, or without them knowing you even didn't know something, right? Yeah, and when it says knowing your time, it could also mean knowing your place. Like, yeah, you need to be watching what you're saying also, because your words have a lot, and the most high judge people off what they say, just like we saw in Matthew. Shalom, Shalom guys. guys, this is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some new scriptures and make sure that you guys are applying your scriptures because they are very, very, very important, okay? All right. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share with your friends and family because if you're not doing that, well, what else are you doing? Exactly. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, you got to subscribe. But anyways, we out. Peace. Peace.